of analysts would have made this game. But he is here. St. John's coming off a real tough loss to Ohio State on the weekend. An 11-0 run by the Buckeyes to win the game. If they're going to turn it around tonight, they've lost two in a row. We can tell you who it's going to be because they pretty much only play six guys. Well, it's not a super six that is in the lottery, but a team that plays a lot of minutes. 98.6 of the point total by these six people. I mean, it's extraordinary the amount of minutes on the floor. The fatigue is a factor for them. They're going to attack the ball, even though they only have six guys. They're going to go after Rutgers and freshman point guard Todd Billett. If Rutgers can take care of the ball and get some open, open looks, they can really knock down the outside shot. Well, you think of Dante Jones and Jeff Greer and, of course, Todd Billett. It's tough to tag three guys. Mm -hmm. One you can in his own, but three, very difficult. It should stretch to date. And all three of those guys are among the top eight in the Big East Conference in three-point shooting, all of them at 40% or better. So that's something to keep an eye on tonight as Rutgers takes on St. John's. Here's the starting lineup for the Scarlet Knights, the youngest starting five in the Big East. And as you can see as a team, 39% from beyond the arc. Billet, Jones, and Greer leading the way from the perimeter. Rashad Kent, 6'6", 265, is a load and then some inside for Kevin Bannon and the Scarlet Knights. We mentioned St. John's has lost two in a row to Seton Hall and Ohio State. Their turnovers and their turnover margin is the best in the Big East. But after committing only four turnovers in the first 37 minutes against Ohio State, they committed four in the last three minutes. And that is why they allowed Ohio State to make that 11-0 run and to beat them on Sunday afternoon. In spite of a couple of losses, though, Mike Jarvis has a good thing going here. They're not deep, but this team is athletic and quick and fun to watch. Well, what the problem, I think, Dan, is when you turn the basketball over late and you're unaccustomed to it, it jars your confidence level. I think early in the game, we're going to see how involved they are, what type of shots they take, St. John's, and yes, the counter. I, I think this Rutgers team is starting to come alive. They're good defensively. They mix it up. A great guard play. I think Todd Billett has proven he is no fluke legitimate Big East point guard. Rutgers 11 and 6, 3 and 2 in the Big East. They've won two in a row. Impressive wins over Notre Dame and Villanova. St. John's at 12 and 4, 4 and 1 in the conference. The only loss coming to Tommy Amaker's Seton Hall Pirates, who are making quite a name for themselves to this point of the season. See how Rutgers hangs in on the road. Kevin Bannon says that's one of the next steps his team has to take, being able to win on the road. He'd also like to win against St. John's. He's never had one of those. For Mike Jarvis, how will his team play at their second home here at the Madison Square Garden? Of course, we're not out at Alumni Hall in Jamaica. And some of the players, Eric Barkley, Bootsy Thornton, Billy, talked about, well, this isn't their home. Jamaica is their home. Well, Did I, they not get the calls here? I mean, I mean, they better think of this as home. Well, I, I think here. Eric Barkley loves to play here. I mean, this is Broadway to him, and I think others as well. Uh, you mentioned the road difficulties. I think Rutgers has turned the corner, and they have a deeper team. They have confidence in guys coming off the bench. They can rest billet on occasion uh, so it's a much better deeper Rutgers team and if the name billet sounds familiar Todd is of course the younger brother of Jeff billet four-year starter Mike Kitts and Ed Corbett right now will be doing the work of three people the weather as everybody in the country knows by now is a real mess up and down the East Coast Ed Corbett actually filling in for John Clockerty who couldn't be here and St. John's goes with principles. <laughs> Mike, you're killing me. <laughs> and they force a steal right away. Reggie Jesse grabs the loose ball. I love this high pick and roll. Jesse will apply the little knockout punch. They turn the corner or set up an inside screen. Postel posting nice. up inside as it's stripped. Nice play by Dante and a good heads up play. Unfortunately for Anthony Glover, he took the brunt of that one, he but did. that's Part of the punishment. This is a terrific slip pass here. Nice drop step. And you see Postel, who is one of the many people that they can drop into the box area. Good sleight of hands. What a, great, Good, Dan. what a great matchup that could be tonight between Dante Jones and LeVar Postel. Here's Jones from outside. Misses the long jumper. And a Bootsy Thornton the rebound. Oh, Barkley explodes by Jones. Can't finish underneath. I think they got Barkley. Uh, maybe venting a little bit as he made a wonderful move. Got around to the 
correct side of the rim but didn't have the type of release. That's part of getting better as a player, too. Uh, Mike Jarvis sings the praises, and you can't blame him for Eric Barkley, who had a little hesitation and blow by in that last move. And Barkley's a point guard with awfully good numbers, and he is a better player than even his numbers would indicate. He distributes well, a great score, and as you would, you would like to say, he's a real nudge on defense, too. <laughs> well, I picked that word up from you. Here's a little nudge defense. It caused UConn problems, a three-quarter trap. They get steals at it very long and a lot of hands. Inside, a look for Eugene Dabney, who has reclaimed his spot as the starting center. Kevin Bannon's used four different guys to start at the center spot. Shot clock a factor at four. And they won't get a shot up to the rim. And a nice collapse defense and terrific passing team. Jesse, one of those that can distribute. At 6'7", he's a forward, but really a point forward. Can handle awfully well. Glover inside. Postel, the offensive rebound. Nobody can put it in the basket right now. Now, don't forget to get into gaps, too. They're going to have to make sure he doesn't penetrate. They love the high-low Rutgers, and they also flash the post. Bullet in the eyes of Kevin Mann, a little quicker and a little more of a true point guard than his older brother. Both can score. He looks good against his own Salvi because he flashes and passes pretty well, and Kevin feels he's making that 15-footer now. Mm -hmm. And we'll see Joel Salvi off the bench. Just not an energy guy alone. Shot clock again winding down. What a follow by Jones. He gets it back again and draws the foul. And empty, but that's the kind of play they need. Their answer to Postel, I believe, Dante Jones can play inside, power to the goal, and has the range as noted earlier. When you bring the zone on closeouts, running out on one side, the people collect in the lane, you forget to identify on the weak side. Jones with a wonderful read. 6'5", sophomore out of Hamilton, New Jersey. Kevin Bannon's first New Jersey recruit at Rutgers. And as we've seen in the last couple of years with Rutgers and Seton Hall, the battle to keep New Jersey kids in the state is escalating. And there is some great talent in the Garden State. There sure is. Uh, wonderful little high school programs over there. Kevin trying to take advantage as well, keeping them home. The first All-State or two for Kevin Bannon. A real legitimate big-time recruit. Dante! Next couple of free throws. First points tonight. Nobody's hit a field goal yet. Same sort of set. And a screen on the baseline. A little flex cut. Here's Postel. And Bootsy, they go deep. And they worked hard on this in practice earlier today. Walter Towns doing the scouting report for Rutgers. Postel puts it on the floor. Elevates over Jones. Misses the jumper. And here comes Billet. A little hesitation to buy Jones. Good pump. Having trouble getting that outside jumper off, so Jones penetrates and hits. Well, that complements the outside shot. And if they run out like that, St. John's, you can slip by and also find people. Dante with all four, averaging better than 16. Barkley slips inside, leaves it short. Boots with the miss on the rebound. They so, can't beat the looks they're getting. No, you're right. Excuse me. And getting on the offensive glass, which they are very good at, especially for a team that doesn't have a lot of height. Little 2-3 look right now. Chase guys off the ball. You should be able to get the baseline. There you go. Good look from high-low. They stretched it gorgeous. Oh, my goodness. Picking it apart. Uh, you see a lot of tape, and you can pick things up as this penetration occurs here. A little nylon delivery into the teeth of the zone. Rutgers retains possession. Shot clock at 10. And it remains with Rutgers with a shot clock down to seven now. You notice the two officials, my old AD, Richie Riggins, this would have been right up his alley. He hated to pay three guys. That's <laughs> just destroyed him. Former Seton Hall athletic director and great. Got to get a look soon. Got it right now. Zip. Billet gets it off in time. And it grazed the rim. Rashad Kent, the offensive rebound, the basket, and the foul. Well, in the Garden State, it's known for grazing. Uh, but the bulk, the offside rebounding, I mean, just carves such a big area. And this is what you do. You rush it late with good defense. But Kent, a guy that didn't really have a great game against Villanova, 
I, we had a kid at Seton Hall, Kenny House, years ago. Same type of body. And if he can do what Kenny did in his four years, he will be a tough out for Rutgers. Good, solid contributor. Trying to get better at the free throw line, Dan. Donald Emanuel into the game because Anthony Glover has two fouls. Kent at the free throw line where he is listed at 6'6", 265. The same weight he was listed at last year, but he admits now that last year he was pushing 300. He is 35 pounds lighter this year. How about size-wise? You still give him the inch? Oh. I give him a 6'4". What yeah. do you think? He and Anthony Glover, and we've already seen Pretty. it a couple of times, will have a big battle. Ooh, I think we got an injury. Yeah. Jones hit the floor hard after attempting to block the shot. Coming up gingerly. I mean, just the fear of something. But nice interior passing by the Johnnies. In traffic, Jones running it off, fortunately. Uh, twist of that ankle from the looks of it. Here's the motion to a post -off. Very quick moves. Makes that jump shot. And here, as you close, the little slippage. And Emmanuel, just that little flash caused him. And he came up gimpy there, Dante Jones. Trying to walk it off, stay in the game. More than four minutes in, Emmanuel trying to give St. John's its first point of the night. Well, both of these clubs are trying to deepen the bench, and I think for Mike Jarvis, Emmanuel's a very important guy as they get the tournament time. Both of us, as Mike Jr. looks on, pensive tonight. Usually got that radiant smile. I think we're hearing some Rutgers fans in the building here. Well, Seven to one. Easy trip when you think mm -hmm. of the train from New Brunswick in here. Got the charge. Offensive foul on LeVar Postel. No basket. Timeout on the floor. St. John's has yet to score a field goal. Rutgers has a six-point lead on the road. Super Bowl 34, coming January 3rd. Two seconds. Oh, my goodness. Duomo on the dribble. Not as good a defender. And you can see right here. Now, one of the real highlights for that young man, Jeff Billett, and the Rutgers program in the Big East, now an assistant at Monmouth. What a player he was. And there's little brother Todd, who, as a freshman, immediately assumes the starting point guard job. Great ball movement by Rutgers, but they can't finish. So it looks like it's going to be eight years of billets at the point they're for the gonna, Scarlet Knights. They're going to have billets up to here, huh? <laughs> and he breaks the assist record That's of his right. brother. A different type of player. And real sound having a wonderful year here early. Barkley, what he does best, get into the lane. Just Sit not back making out. it. Postel from outside misses the three and Kent the rebound. Five minutes, no field goals, 0 for 9 from the floor are the Johnnies. And Rutgers with a nice push. They're not getting anything out of it, but they may be able to get an early one before the defense is set the way they're pushing it. See, they overload here. Ooh, you got to give it to them. Had Billy, you got to take advantage, Dante. Jones turns it over, and then the fouls Bootsy Thornton. That's like a compound felony, huh? Don't give it up. Then make a mistake. And right here in the left corner, He's got help. That's something St. John's does very well. In their clothes, active hands. That's the second foul on Dante Jones. That's something to keep an eye on for Rutgers. Remember, Anthony Glover already has two for St. John's. Oh, Kent with the foul there. One way of stopping an alley-oop, huh? A little stand up like a lineman. Uh, he can knock you back on your heels. Tough start for Mike Jarvis, who had to wonder how his team would respond after the Ohio State game. Thornton to miss. Thornton had 28, a season high against the Buckeyes on Sunday. And Mike saying to both of us, he thought they played very well against Ohio State, and then late yep. in the game, Ohio State stepped it up. If it had been a 37-minute game, it would have been a win going away for St. John's. Think of this, Scooney Penn from up in Salem. A nice open look by Greer, but a deep one. Scooney Penn, Mike Jarvis from that That's area. Right. That's right. A little payback. The seven to one Rutgers. St. John's led Ohio State back into the game in the last three minutes as Chudney Gray checks in off the Red Store bench. The Buckeyes scored the last 11 points of the game Sunday in two minutes and 48 seconds to win. There's Joel Salvi. He is easy to spot on the floor for more than just his hairdo. Mm -hmm. He brings as much energy as any player in the conference. High voltage. Turn and face. Nobody cutting. Emmanuel, no, there's Salvi. Always an immediate impact. Yep. On the floor. 
Kevin Abandon has talked about when a couple of his starters get into foul trouble that if they don't have Salvi, they just don't win the games that they've been able to win in the last couple of weeks. Very complimentary about his ability. I mean, he has seen this team grow. They're deeper. They understand how to play together. And I think defensively they've improved. In spite of the losses of Jeff Billett and Rob Hodgson, another great four-year player for them. Dabney a miss. Salvi on the glass. Steps. Ooh, got away with yeah. one. And here's Barkley, one on four. Salvi's one of those guys that walks into the room and the lights go on. <laughs> Bing! Gets your attention. The fan favorite at the rack, and you'll see why tonight. So that is some building. That may be one of the premier buildings in the Big East. That's great, yeah. Excitement and getting after it. We've got a big Monday game there in late February against UConn, and Emmanuel with a putback as St. John's finally comes up with its first field goal tonight, almost seven minutes into the game. And Anthony Glover up big on the bench for his partner in crime. Those big guys stick together. Give it. Luis Flores into the game for Rutgers, turns it over. Thornton will miss the lay-in, but he'll shoot a couple. It's amazing how often guys don't catch or pass or misuse a dribble, and it costs you an easy deuce in the open floor. And they just can't get the handle, but uh, the Johnnies continue the activity. You think of Barkley, uh, but one of the better hands on this particular team mm -hmm. is the boots getting to the tin. He is fourth in the conference in steals and almost three per game. And over his last seven games, he's got 28 steals for a guy who came out of junior college known exclusively as an offensive player. A stroker, two plus steals a game. They do look a little lethargic. And it, it's, you know, Rutgers is being sound. Uh, but conversely, I think when you lose a game like they did against Ohio State, it takes a while to get into the flow of the game particularly the run they had had prior to that. You mentioned Seton Hall was really the only flat tire in recent memory. Their season, they lost the opener 1-6, lost to DePaul 1-6, and then losses to Seton Hall and Ohio State. So they're 12-4 overall and ranked 23rd in the country. So 2-2-1 two, two, and they settle. Nice luck. There's too much heat. Greer inside, jump stop, and it'll drop. He deserves a little bounce, that mm -hmm. Cardinal Hayes youngster. A New Yorker. Rutgers back out to a five-point lead. I first got to see Jeff Greer play in the White Eagle Hall, which is where St. Anthony's works out. Danny Hurley, the assistant to Kevin Bannon. They showed up. I'm so, my goodness, this guy's pretty good. He was almost <laughs> a steal for Rutgers. Yeah, you're right. Brother Ricardo, of mm -hmm. course, a, a junior, but older than Jeff. is a star right now at Pitt. Clear out for Barkley as he tries to take Billet. He's really getting in the lane, and he's trying to initiate contract. He's looking for some help from the officials as uh, Billet plays pretty good D, and there's the career brothers. Look at the rebounding numbers on Ricardo Greer, who's no more than 6'5 himself, but he's got about 30 pounds that Jeff doesn't have. Oh, Jesse he Free. Was. He is strong, though. Isn't yeah. he, Ricardo? Oh, yeah. Now, St. John's passing up people and just not attentive. They're an excellent passing team and an unselfish team. Flores into the game early tonight for Rutgers. Hasn't been playing all that much lately, but he's alongside Billet in the backcourt. Flores, a freshman, scored 35 points per game last year, highest in New York City. Tough shot. And good rebound for Kent. Now, Billet's got to help if he sees him. Peace. He had a couple of trailers. Chudney Gray off to Reggie Jesse, back to Gray, and a block is the call. Good call, very good call. The ability to push, if you don't score at the one end, there's usually a run out as they get down the other. A good passing team. I mentioned passing up people. Reggie Jesse is a wonderful finder of cutters, but he's also good without the ball, Dan, and Jesse has been free a couple of times and hasn't gotten the give back. Gray, the sixth man on this St. John's team, started three games when Eric Barkley was injured. Barkley underwent knee surgery, missed a couple, came off the bench for a third. Postel back into the game for the Johnnies, and Bootsy Thornton sits down. Gray averaging just a shade under 10 points per game. Otherwise, St. John's would have six guys averaging in double figures. You wouldn't know it, by the way, they've started tonight only six points in eight and a half minutes, and Rutgers leads by three. 
at Madison Square Garden. A slow start offensively tonight, just 9-6. to six. We do have some good news, though. Got a third official. Bernard Clinton came from Washington and managed to make it in despite the weather, so he joins Ed Corbett and Mike Kitts in this put-together three-man crew. Originally, John Clockard is supposed to be here, but the weather prevented him from making it. And Kent, nice handle and cut to set this up. Good ball, ball, fake. ball yeah. fake, and he got it. How about that? Not afraid to make a play. I mean, that's what seems to have happened with this Rutgers team. The understanding of when to fake, when to control, and a little freeze play. Flores, 6'2", freshman out of Washington Heights, New York, attended Norman Thomas High, and as we mentioned, led New York City in scoring last year, 35 points per game, averaging four per game off the bench for Rutgers, and there's a tie-up between a Salvi and a Barkley, and St. John's will get the ball on the arrow. And you mentioned Flores is a pretty good outside shooter, too. Wonderful play in the open floor, and this is part of that development for Kevin Bannon, getting deeper and getting more confidence. They are young, but they're pretty good. 11 and 6 overall, 3 and 2 in the conference. Lost at home to West Virginia when they'd like to have back. Just a 62 to 60 defeat. Postel elevates and misses. And St. John's, if you can believe it, is 1 for 16 from the floor. That was a great defensive set there. They followed the curl and a great challenge on the jumper. This is what he's tough, I yep. think. He's, he really finds people. Billet looks baseline to Kent. Touch pass to Salvi. And a travel is the call. Now that is not Salvi's fault. That's one where Rashad Kent has to read ahead. It looks good, but you've got to know who's there, who's looming. Sometimes discretion. Again, St. John's taking care of the ball. That's the fourth turnover committed by the Scarlet Knights. Biggest problem for St. John's, obviously. Can't shoot right now. And they're switching that wave. Nice cut by Barkley. Wow. The rest rather easy for Rich. Are they the best passing team you've seen in college this year? Uh, yeah, Luke Conasek, as you know, a couple of weeks ago when we were out there, was saying best St. John's passing team he has seen. Look at this. Step up too far by Greer. Barkley, another steal. He leads the Big East to three per game in that department. But now he can't get the handle and stumbles out of bounds to turn it back over. Yeah, he is struggling just a little bit. But finding people. Now the little cut. The defense opens up. Flores glancing at the basketball. And then Reggie with the pass. But Barkley playing a passing lane. You saw the distance about 30 feet cross court. They're too quick to make that conversion. This time Rutgers gets it over. But a career long on the three. Gray to Jesse. Back for Gray, and the bounce pass wouldn't work. Not a bad idea, but one of those a little harsh and a little too deep. But good run out, and you can just see here, it's a little softer mm -hmm. and maybe earlier. One thing with Billet, too, even if it's a good look here for him to get the foul by Gray, it's difficult on occasion with the zone to see over and make the play. So he's got to make sure he turns and gets a passing lane. He's listed at six. What would you get? 5'11"? Yeah, maybe? I think so. Yeah. We were joking with Kevin Abandon earlier as Billet steps to the line for three. We asked him if there are any other kids in the family. How many years can he keep going with this Billet thing? And Bannon said he's tried to get Jeff to get a start on having kids. <laughs> well, I'm sure he gets some calls, Jeff. Uh, down there as an assistant coach at Monmouth mm -hmm. College. Great stride. That little reminisce that we had. We were part of that. That's it was right. fun that to watch. Fun. Not fun for the Georgetown no. people, but... That's two years ago when Rutgers was just starting to make a name for themselves. Last year, they appeared headed for the tournament. They were 17-7 and seven before losing their final four regular season games and winding up in the NIT. And the zone look here, Dan. Now, the zone that you play in, I would term a Tavern League zone. And this <laughs> is a little more active. They exchange all the weaves. Nice hands by Greer. Oh, and they do get away with it. Suddenly go, oh, easy. Suddenly might get a delay of the game there. I think Mike Kitts was already running down the floor. Didn't see him kick the ball. Got his sports mistaken there. And they frustrated Mike Jarvis. They played so well for so much of the game against Ohio State despite losing, but eight points in 11 minutes tonight for a team that averages almost 80 points per game. Nice cut. 
This is where they excel. Dante's got to be careful with the two. And he backs off. Not bad. Got to give up to Deuce to get number three. Chudney Gray, the jumper, and St. John's back within three. So this ignites Bellin. This is dangerous. I mean, if he starts making those, the press helps his game, I think. Jesse over Billet. And Salvi comes out of there with it. Now it's numbers. numbers. Kent off to Dante, and a lot of the crowd thought that Kent got away with a walk. How about Bootsy? He ended up in the band section there. <laughs> you run into Kent's chest. Say goodnight. No airbag. 6'6 six, six and 265 with a full head of steam. Barkley for three. Salvi's in there again, but it's ripped away by the Johnnies and the jam by LeVar Postel. And Dan, this is the first time I've watched Eric Barkley not be himself out there. Not so much that the shot didn't go in, but it's not, the flow's not going his way. He's got to back off his game just a little bit and let it happen. You always don't have those extraordinary nights. It's not as if he doesn't have help on the floor. Anybody on the floor for St. John's is capable of a 20-point night. Billet thought about it, now gets inside for the two. Back rim, rebound Jesse. Well, he's starting to get some good looks, though. That could be a problem for the Johnnies. Postel the pull. And another rebound for Salvi. Ooh. Look at this, at 4-2. Gamble by Chudney Gray. Does not pay off, although Jones misses the shot. What a kick out. This guy loves to finish. This time he'll dish it off to Barkley. What a kick out by Jesse. I mean, up in the air, whistle so like. And the rest, the little deuce might get Eric involved. Good feed on the break from Chudney Gray as well. Got to get somebody in the foul line. Nobody posting for these two. Got to get there. You're right. None of the big guys coming to help out Billet and Greer in the backcourt, and they're having trouble just getting it over. You've got to know and help your partner because Mike Jarvis guys, they're used to that three-quarter court, and right in here, nobody steps up to help out. Shot's got to jump, get involved. It causes or leads to a turnover. And here, the Greer giveaway in the open floor. Another steal for St. John's, and they are showing signs of life, getting back into it. Now down to my only one. Dan, as you can see, uh, St. John's creeping back in here, probably because of the defense and maybe Rutgers not as attentive on the offensive end, getting delayed. They got to help one another out. Postel gets the lane. Look at that elevation. Mm. But the finish. Yep. You get the feeling St. John's feels they're awfully close. They're getting the looks, getting the turnovers right now. They just need to be able to finish. Now, this is that uh, UNLV look. They rack outside. It's a 2 3 and then recover. Billet to the bench with the ball now. Renardo Brown, junior college player, in his first year with Rutgers, backs up Billet at the point. Ooh, ooh, is that Bootsy out there? Got to hit the stomach. Yeah, got an injury on the floor. Good refereeing, too. Uh, no damage. And it is Bootsy Thornton. It's one of those peculiar, maybe just caught him incorrectly. As he turns the corner, oh, I see, up in the rib cage area just an inadvertent arm didn't look like anything malicious whatsoever and he is still in obvious distress has been flailing his legs around quite a bit now the Rutgers team is going to leave the floor as Mike Jarvis has come out to check on his player you see fluky things happen yeah. don't you think I mean, right yeah. on the open floor he may just gotten the wind hopefully that's yeah what you it. hope it's nothing worse than that although do you recall the left arm on a giveaway foul that he injured mm -hmm. early in the yep. year. He may have just been caught in that tender area. They're moving that arm. Yep. That, that may just be what it, a continuing nagging injury. Not so much this one, but what happened earlier. And they are working that left arm. Mm -hmm. well, coming up a little bit later on tonight over on ESPN. This game will begin at 9 Eastern. It's another super-looking matchup on Super Tuesday out of the SEC. Number 7, Auburn, led by Chris Porter, taking on number 13, Tennessee, a week ago. Can you forget that double overtime win for the Volunteers over Florida? That game comes up at 9 Eastern for more. 
Log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network, Go.com, and it is the SEC leading the way right now in terms of ranked teams, and I'd have to say maybe exciting games as well. What a conference it has been this year. Vandy has really come on, and LSU has had some great moments. Lange at Vandy uh, having a great year, and, and there's the, uh, the sore shoulder. You know, Cliff Ellis got one of the great leaders and people in Doc Robinson. This is the injury, and I just think it's a residual effect of the injury a couple of weeks ago. And Bootsy going in, Ron Linfonte attentive. That's tough. Sometimes they just don't go away and you get the wrong shot and you're paying for it. We'll pass on the word to you as soon as we get some word about the extent of the injury and whether or not a Bootsy Thornton can be expected to return. Well, Salvi's standing on the foul line. He's got to move a little bit, I think. Flash, trying to overload. Knocked away by Gray, but Rutgers gets it back. Plenty of time to shoot. Have you ever seen his own team get more hands on balls? I mean, it's just amazing. Not a lot of size again. It's all quickness, anticipation. Dabney underneath. Wow. On the money. Bernardo Brown, and that gives Billet a chance to rest. Early in the year, he was playing too many minutes, I thought. He was up 38, 39 minutes yeah. some nights. Recently, Brown's had a couple of good games. Ten mm -hmm. points against Providence. Ten in the weekend win over Villanova. And a little quicker with the ball. Might be able to penetrate a little bit more against that zone. Yeah, that's why I know. Penetration can really put it on the floor and get to the ten. A little clear. Seven on the shot clock. It bounces to Emmanuel. He's not option number one. Something with a push. Oh, my goodness. And they get it back. Barkley flies inside. And over the back goes Emmanuel. Now, once again, the domain of Eric Barkley from Christ the King has been the three-second lane, much like Renardo getting in here. Look at this little slip and the finish and that's good solid basketball as Dabney continues to improve and grow and that's the other area the center by committee Alvis Tenis another guy that mm -hmm. they get in there Salvi we've seen and of course Dabney as well Kareem Wright another guy that they can go a little bit deeper as they've grown as players and in, in their confidence. Right, a 6'9", 300-pound freshman. Four different players have started at center for Kevin Bannon, including Salvi, who's at the line now. These are his numbers off the bench. And in Big East play, eight points, seven rebounds per game, and he's already got five rebounds tonight. Joel's got the whole look, the long socks. <laughs> Kerry Kittle's look. There's Kevin Bann, a former great player at uh, St. Peter's. A Jersey bred, huh? Just like Steve, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah Ryder played at St. Peter's. He's had a lot more success, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, little steps here, and they get the ball back. Yeah. Rutgers. Good hustle. And Joel saw it. Mean, he does have some juice. Pumping and thrusting. Mike Jarvis has some concerns right now. Emmanuel in your screen has two fouls. Glover has two fouls. And Bootsy Thornton is hurt. And they're not a deep team. Tonight, Emmanuel got into the game early. He's the seventh player in that rotation for Mike Jarvis. But rarely does he go deeper than that. Turn and look. And now roll. Well, see that? Yeah. I thought he had it. That's his shot there. He's making it. You're right. That's what Kevin Van has told us today. So don't be surprised. Don't say, where did that come from on the air when he hits the 15-footer? Doesn't Kevin realize we get a tape here and there? <laughs> I think he asked me to pass the message along to you. Uh, you were very helpful with the scouting report. Rutgers by six over a sluggish bunch of Johnnies right now. And when they were working out today, then the floor wasn't totally down. They had the Nick logo and everything. Nice look. Got to finish. Emmanuel can't. Got to convert that. Nice bailout by Greg. And they've been solid when they run their half-court offense, too. They haven't been the open floor opportunities. Nobody guards Brown, so he'll take it. Greer with a great effort to keep it alive, and Rutgers gets it back. Dante Jones. Good pull up. Salvi. Salvi. Activity personified. Not that he plays to the house, but the house plays to him. You are right. Largest lead of the night for Rutgers. Have you seen a guy enjoy his college career more? He's just, and he, on the bench, he's active, yep. gets in the game, creative. Unfortunately for Kevin Abandon, this is his final year. He's a junior college guy, so only two years with the Rutgers, but he has made the most of his time. 
just a little flatness right now in the Johnnies. 22-14. The Rutgers got to be solid. Don't do anything silly to let St. John's back in. Conversely, St. John's has to step this deep. Jones for three. There they go. They are an improved basketball team. Mike Jarvis with the timeout. A real struggle for St. John's, but Rutgers juiced. Excelling in their half-court set. A the pull up. A 10 0 run for Rutgers with plenty of energy to spare. Rutgers brought some fans with them from down in Piscataway. You always question the mentality of Jersey people. <laughs> Me included. Well, I work with them all year round. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's Clark. right. Nothing about Jersey. And Rutgers by 11. And uh, St. John's not even leaving to get to the foul line. That's key. Got to get some post up or inside shots. Mike Jarvis has been down the road. He knows he's got to provide the position to attack and get their heads into the game. Postel with a jumper, he's got a four, averaging 14 and a half, second on the team to Barclay. You notice Kent was on the foul line that time to help the pressure. They've got to react when it's shown. Got to respect the jumper of Jones this year, 40% from beyond the arc after being in the low 30s last year. Billet back into the game at the point. Brown gave him some good minutes. Good, oh, good kick, uh, down and throw and under the nylon, but well executed. Kevin Bannon picking it apart. Little curl to the wing. Now you tell me, big brother sitting across the floor doesn't even smirk, doesn't get up and cheer when little brother hits the three as Barkley answers at the other end. Well, they've been watching one another for years. And uh, some of the comments are interesting too. Uh, Todd saying how much he learned watching his brother. But more of a point mentality, yeah. I think, don't you? Yes. And he's a similar kind of a play on the overload. See if they go opposite again. Attack the gap and kick. Rutgers a very good three-point shooting team, and all three of their best shooters are on the floor now. Rear the miss, kept alive underneath briefly, but now St. John's has it. Now they got to find the game. Give, oh, he had Thornton. Now he finds Postel. Great move by Lamar Postel. He's got six, and now it's Kevin Bannon who wants a timeout. Well, fast breaks get you involved in the game. Now the runout's very important. The pass selection, extraordinary. I thought maybe he passed up the initial dive, but nice find by Barkley. And right now, uh, Kevin can't complain about the shots. Greer got him in the middle, didn't make it, had a wing pass. This is just pretty. Look at this. Now, look at the, everybody's paying attention, thinking the ball's going that way. Get the puppy set. A little nylon delivery. That Billet family must have some shootouts, huh? <laughs> in the backyard. Jeff wound up ninth on Rutgers' all-time scoring list. Rutgers has hit a couple of threes. St. John's not a great perimeter shooting team, has yet to make one. When St. John's is really on, it's steal after steal and layup after layup. Well, the difference, 30% from 3 to 39 for Rutgers. I mean, I'll tell you, that's a large percentage. As you can see, when Rutgers wins, one of the big reasons, they really shoot it from outside. Thornton, uh, good to see him out there. And it goes straight up. Man, man. Bootsy back after that apparent shoulder injury earlier. Brown back into the game along with Billet in the backcourt again. Uh, they're very active without the basketball. Do they use the post screens down underneath? A lot of activity. Well, Brown's a bundle of energy with the ball too, isn't it? He sure is. Nice line. And a weak shot left by Jesse. What a clear out by Kent to provide the lane. Now a Ooh. lane for Chucky Brown. Got a score. And they do. Got a score. Mike, the fourth official in on the act. This is just a great burst by Chetson. Sunday Gray getting to the rim and uh, the provider of a lot of emotional stability for Rutgers. Kevin Bannon not agreeing with the call. Salvi making sure it doesn't go, but I do think it was goaltending. Yeah. Chudney Gray hardly played last year. Salvi, the basket interference call, and he doesn't start this year, but he is as good a finisher as there is in this conference. He loves getting to the basket, and Mike Jarvis loves the fact his team's alive. They're back in it now, down by five. Hello. Put nacho cheese sauce on the chalupa. What? Put nacho cheese sauce on the chalupa, or else. Or else what?
four shots after making only five of their first 29, and they're capable of making a run in a hurry. Oh, they sure are. And Rutgers has played solid basketball. Kevin Bannon has been consistent since he's gotten there. He's given them stability. And this club, the Johnnies, took them a while, I think, to wake up, particularly this half. But I, I just think Rutgers is confident. They've improved. They got a good feel amongst themselves. You're going to have to come with your best. And part of the stability is Bob Mulcahy, the Rutgers athletic director, who just is so impressed with what Kevin has done with this program. And they're only going to get better and better. You mentioned their ability to get kids in state. His recruiting has shown itself. And right now, they keep playing like this. Uh, they're going to be one of the teams playing in March. Step through, works for St. John's. Travel on Brown. Coming up at halftime, we are going to join ESPN News for a look around the world of sports, uh, other college basketball games. Miami Notre Dame here in the Big East, Indiana taking on Michigan. And Andy Katz of ESPN.com is going to tell you about a rule change that Bill and I saw firsthand the Miami Villanova game when the officials were not allowed to check, not within the rules for them to check whether a shot at the end of a half or a game came before or after the buzzer. Johnny Hemsley's controversial three won a game for Miami. Up at the pavilion in Villanova, and that rule is now changed. Well, it, they, the, the old days it was correctable error. You could then look at it, and then in surreptitious fashion. And Hank Nichols was at the game, that's and right. the coordinator of officials, and he said, you know, the one at Texas Tech and this one, they're going to look at that quickly. So uh, I'm glad that they've adjusted. I just think it, it it's such a bang bang play. You want the team that scores or misses to go. You know, you want to get it right. They'll get it correct. And I think Tim Higgins will be the first of them to come over and look if that were the rule to make sure. St. John's heating up. Barkley one of two from the line. A four-point game and an 8-0 run for the Red Storm here late in the first half. Trouble for Billet. Ooh, almost in almost the back court, but they get the turnover. Barkley the other way. And it's a 10-0 run for St. John's. And what kills you if you're Rutgers is you've worked so hard to get control, and now the whole temperament and complexion of the game has turned against you. They need a good trip right now. Shot clock turned off for the final Look second. Look at the half. They almost got it again. Uh, you, uh, conversely, your you're Mike Jarvis, you're saying, come on, give me a couple of minutes. Let's get back in this thing. <laughs> Give me some firepower. And Barkley really doing a nice job with Billet. Ooh, watch the arms. Shot, no. Beats the post to Kent. He is surrounded, and it will remain Rutgers ball with 6.3 seconds to play. Well, you know there's going to be body contact with Ken. He's got to get some of those calls. Now having trouble getting it in. Three seconds. Brown and the reach, I think, by Jesse. Good call. Good things happen when you bounce to ecstasy. The breakdown with six seconds. And Brown, his growth has enabled him to play together at times, he and Billet. So you've got a two-point mentality and a chance for a catch and a long shot here with eight tenths. Anything over three tenths, they claim you can still shoot. Brown out of Flint, Michigan. You can see the bounce in his step that he's got that Billet doesn't have, and Brown able to penetrate a little bit more. A little more easily. Greer is going to come out, and Flores checks back in. And until recently, Billet had been playing, as you mentioned, 36, 38 minutes a night. Now Brown gives him a rest every now and again. That almost went. Wow. <laughs> Rutgers gets to the break with a lead, not what they had, because St. John's ends the half on a 10-1 run. But as Rutgers on the road leading by three, ESPN News is next. I will help one client succeed. This has been on a great tear lately. They've beaten Notre Dame, they've beaten Villanova. This would be a huge road win for them. Actually, last Saturday, when I was at the Ohio State St. John's game, Mike Jarvis told me this was a critical game for them to turn the corner in the Big East after losing to Seton Hall and then a non-conference game to Ohio State. If they lose this one, they're essentially out of first place. Out of the first place race. Let's find out what else is going on around the nation. Indiana ranked 12th in the land, taking on Michigan. Kirk Haston down low, putting the Hoosiers up by six in a game you could see on ESPN. Wolverines struggled shooting. That's putting it mildly. Josh Aslan was short. Kevin Gaines has that stamp returned to sender. 
Lavelle Blanchard, no. Michigan, four for their first 30 from the field. Off another Michigan miss. The Hoosiers scramble for the loose ball. They have to because Bob will run them to death tomorrow if they don't. Michael Lewis takes it down court, falling out of bounds, plus the foul. The Hoosiers up 27 at the break. Kirk Haston with 17 points. Let's update him now with 19 points. It is 62-32. The roll as he gets in the lane. Renardo turning the corner, selecting a gorgeous delivery, damning with the finish. But the defense, all of a sudden, the life, the flow of blood and energy goes St. John's way because of the traps, the turnovers, and Barkley getting himself a little bit pumped and back into the game. Barkley had a couple of steals. Bootsy Thornton, despite an injury, had three steals in that first half, and St. John's is back in it, trailing by three. After a big win, the football team... And St. John's, 29-26, Rutgers leading. They've lost their last five in a row to St. John's, but they've got the lead at the half now. St. John's, though, Billy, got back into it with that pressure, got some layups. How did the Scarlet Knights handle that pressure? Well, it's a little slippage. Uh, unfortunately for Rutgers, maybe dissipating a wonderful first half. But as you look at these numbers, Dan, I think they've got to make a little adjustment. Maybe put Billet in the middle, put others outside, dump to him, and then penetrate. He'll make better decisions. They won't turn it over. And I think that's very important. Second chance points are very helpful to them, but look at the steals and leading to runouts. Mm -hmm. Seven to buy St. John's. Some ugly shooting numbers for both teams, although again, St. John's made only one of its first 16 and then shot 50% the rest of the half just to get it up to 30. Dante Jones leads Rutgers with nine. A billet and Salvi off the bench. Salvi had five points and seven rebounds in the first half. Barkley was only four of 11, but he's got nine points to lead St. John's. He has stepped it up late, too. Most of his misses were early. He got in the lane at halftime, by the way. Luke Conasecca, amongst many former baseball greats, was honored. Uh, part the of the same. 1960 uh, Final Four team. And, and my thought when I saw Louie was, I hope these guys could hit. <laughs> because uh, other than sacrificing somebody up, I don't think you can get it out of the infield. St. John's matching its lowest scoring first half of the season. When you and I saw them a couple of weeks ago against Pitt, they had a 31-point lead at the half. Uh, I think this is a different Rutgers team right now. Uh, they're being tested. Uh, you mentioned the road, how you make some adjustments, how you handle it, cope with it. And right now, an energy, a different St. John's attitude. I think maybe back where they were a couple of weeks ago. So, Rutgers coming off a four-game homestand in conference play, which is a rarity indeed, and they went three and one. Now they're out on the road for three. Chudney Gray will start the second half. Lucy Thornton, who injured what appeared to be a shoulder and then returned, does not start the second half. And a quick tie-up inside between Barkley and Kent. They get Barkley to foul, and uh, he's trying to wrestle with Kent. I mean, that's the kind of fire that Eric Barkley possesses. I mean, not a lot of guys are going to, once the whistle blows, continue wrestling with the big guy. Chudney Gray's numbers off the bench. He had seven in the first half. Made three starts for the injured Eric Barkley back in December and averaged better than 14 points and six assists per game. Nice little screen down and a switch as Barkley ends up with Greer. Successful getting to the middle and kicking, and anytime they overload and curl Billet to this side. Now let's see if they get a, a nice little play. Postel recognizing. Kent down in the corner with 12 on the shot clock. Ah, nice. The great help by Glover that time. Of course, the two fouls, he didn't speak his name too often. And that was a turnover potential right there. Eight to shoot. Rutgers is two of a nine from beyond the arc in the first half. Rear inside, tough catch Ooh. by Dabney. A little contact, but no call on Postel. Great look. Gray to Barclay. Can't finish. Wonderful look by Gray, and you mentioned his ability to finish. Nice dish. Village jumper, back rim, kept alive, and gathered in by Chudney Gray. The decision maker generally, Jesse. Great passer from the forward position. Barkley to tie it. Rebound, Postel, no look dish underneath, and Glover up it in. 
kiss by Anthony, but was that pretty? Oh. Defense tough to recover in a fake by Postel. First points of the night for Glover, who averages better than 11. Here's another steal. Glover to Gray. And it won't go down. Tell you, it's tough when you don't use the glass. You've got to value the ball now, Rutgers. A lot of hands in the way. You see Gray coming up with Barkley with a slap the last trip. Greer open on the wing. And Glover going derriere to derriere with Kent. Going back to the final few minutes of the first half, St. John's is on a 12-1 to run. They have never led in this game. Post up. That was a great look. Look at this play by Gray. They're reading. And Barkley draws the foul on the floor. But again, the offense keyed by the good defense. Well, most good teams, if they're struggling, they're going to get a little salvation out of aggressive defensive play. But the ability to attack the rim, despite giving up inches, uh, the look away, you can see the nice hands by Billet almost causes, but the kiss sweeter for St. John's but Chundy Gray in the middle of things causes the problems and look at this hesitate a little blow by and now Glover jams it home on the inbound speed from Barkley and the Red Storm has its first lead of the night I see now they keep the guards back at some point I think they're going to get a decision maker in the middle who can turn and attack now this St. John's defense, they're swarming. Flores in for Greer for Rutgers. Dante Jones with the answer. Pretty good confidence on that offensive end. Dante Jones just a sophomore and just turned 19. He was the youngest player in the Big East last year. So you want to talk about upside for a guy already averaging almost 17 a game. Nice deal. Flores takes it away from Gray, and Gray takes it right back. Got to be a little tougher. Barkley finds Jesse baseline. Drive throw and deliver. That's what you want your point guard to do, and Barkley did not charge. First two of the night for Jesse. They're covering the middle pretty well. Nice splitting of the D. Underneath, Kent. Clean block by Glover. What a save. Post down. Barkley. Have you seen as good a pass along the floor as Postel made? Not many. I mean, that was just a roller, a bowling pass. But getting into the middle. Now, this I thought maybe they could have picked up the charge, but the slide by a little nylon with a rattle by Jesse, all set up by great penetration by Barkley. And a Barkley to the line, just a sophomore. Christ the King at MCI. That band-aid that you see is for a scratch that long ago healed, but he was playing so well that it became a superstition of his, and some of St. John's fans and cheerleaders have picked it up wearing band-aids in the same spot. I like yours myself. <laughs> uh, Derek uh, Chivas, who used to play Missouri, used to have That's one right. of those on. Used to move it around. That was the big thrill for play-by-play -play guys to locate it. Barkley hits them both. What a talent he is. So this is all out pressure. I think you've got to at some point go over the top, down to 30 seconds, and then what a bad foul. Oh, you've got them. You don't want to give the small change down that end, Reggie Jesse. Number two on him. Now, Billet, and you see the freshman, Billet, saying, come on back, guys. Give me some help back here. Uh, and what's happening, more and more white shirts at the far end here now, in the backcourt. That's dangerous. You've got to get people out of here. Dabney with a nice post up. I see they just don't have somebody to give it to and attack. Now, again, though, Billet needs a little bit of help, and here's Flores. Again, Dabney calling for the ball. There you go. And they find him. Nice pass. Oh, well, again, not the right guy to make the decision. From the corner, Jones jumper no good. Jones in there again. It's still loose. And finally, the tie-up will give it back to St. John's. Now, that was, well, it's amazing. You can do a good job as a coach, and Kevin Banning gets it to the right spot. Anybody else but Rashawn Kent at the top of the key in that foul area might take it to the rim, and they end up with a, a good shot, but they probably could have had a better one if it was one of the forwards like Greer or Jones dribbling it at the 10. Here's Salvi again in for Kent. 
Kevin Bannon put his instant energy fella on the floor for 14 minutes in the first half. And Salvi responded with five points and seven boards. You see how they exchanged the dribble and the back cut? Almost a zone on the perimeter here. And they like this weave. And they're not getting a pick out of it either. Once again, the penetration. I thought it may have been a charge there. But... Well, Barkley, but avoids it. What agility by Glover when he's in close to the basket. Turn. Into the corner. Jones puts it on the floor and hits. He is tough. Hey, that's one of those where the three-point play does hurt you. Guys stay too far out sometimes when you can get the sure deuce. Nice recovery by Jones. St. John's had been on a 20-3 run until that basket. What a play. Just took it right away from Florence. Got to be ready. Got to pay attention. He is the sixth member of that Super Six we talked about at the beginning of the game. Those six players getting over 90% of the minutes and over 98% of the points to St. John's. And there's a foul on Postel. A swarmer. I mean, they are all over it. Nice dump down that time and good acknowledgement. Uh, Mike Jarvis, not delighted. Thought it was a... A good giveaway, but here, Gray, you just relax a little bit. This is the kind of team, St. John's, that knows how to pick you apart. A little frustration right now by Rutgers. I think they've got to loosen it with some attack. At the line, Eugene Dabney, redshirt freshman. Tore up his knee after only five games last year, so he got a medical redshirt for it. And he was a starter at the beginning of the year, then lost all of his minutes. Didn't play in three straight games before Kevin Bannon, after trying a couple of other people at the center spot, turned back to Dabney. And he was very strong in recent wins over Notre Dame and Villanova. Ten points, eight rebounds against Villanova. That's pretty impressive. Just a 50% shooter from the line this year, and he keeps that intact by hitting one of two. Tough, tough rebound. Jones again. Very physical performance, that trip. St. John's not ready to squeeze. 15 points for Dante Jones. He's the high scorer in this game, and Jesse gets called for getting the elbow up. And that's Salve. I mean, he does that to you. A nudge. <laughs> gets under your skin, under your shirt. Number three on Jesse. Things seem to happen when Salve gets on the floor. Coast. We'll see what the weather's like in Philadelphia next when Temple takes on a Xavier. Pepe Sanchez is back and after missing some time earlier in the year with an injury. Not a huge score, but rebounds, assists, steals, leadership, poise, second coach on the floor. And look what they've done with him. Six and one since his return. Dave Strader, Jay Billis will bring that again to you. Looks like you, a presence. Uh, <laughs> looks like Mike Jarvis has this run. Very impressive, the last 740. And Mike probably questioning whether Reggie really elbowed him, but it wasn't a good move. And you mentioned Salvi. He recoils and lets everybody yeah. know. Wise move. Again, Dabney, the big man, comes back to help Rutgers get the ball over. But got to communicate a little bit. Chudney Gray runs over Todd Billet. And that'll be number two on Chudney Gray. Jesse and Glover already have three. And remember, this isn't a deep team. You just beat the timeline. You relax a little bit. They come swarming after you. At some point, maybe a post and maybe an early hit. Good the, flash by Dabney. The word on Bootsy Thornton, by the way, who hasn't played this half, is a stiff shoulder. He is expected to return. Nice flash. But see how close Dabney and Salvi were? You'd think as a shooting team, the zone would play into the hands of the Scarlet Knights. There's the feed they've been looking for. And Salvi with a nice little flash turn. And Dabney with a dive to the rim. Five points now for Dabney. And a little run by Rutgers to tie the game. Look at Salvi jam things up. Nice screen across for Postel. Lever turns and faces. Now tries it again. And Ed Corbett's going to foul on the floor before the shot. Well, you got to find some answers. And Rutgers, what a nice job is what we do is we get Salvi in here. Dabney's going to make his little cut here. One of the few times in their half court that they've been able to do some damage. Look at this nice sprint. And right away the turn. And how about the bounce pass? And good high hand coordination by Eugene. Really three guys you can handle. Jesse, Barkley, and Gray. Postel and Glover also on the floor for the Johnnies. 
Throw zone look now. I think attack baseline with the two, two defenders in the back. Gray, remember, he's left-handed. Just missed the shot, and Dabney pulls down the rebound. St. John's must have had a half dozen shots go in and out tonight. They turn on that angle. You get both guards out there trying to take a passing lane away, active with the hands. We saw an opening, and it closed on him. Well, it always doesn't work out. Good intentions, but patience has to prevail. There's Bootsy Thornton back into the game, despite the bad shoulder. Didn't do much at all in the scoring department in the first half. This is a guy who averages better than 14 a game, shoots 47%, and also is St. John's best threat from beyond the arc. He had 6-3 Sunday against Ohio State. I'm going to test your memory. Do you remember when he came in after the injury the last game we did? Against Pitt? And I said, well, he'll drive to the goal. And he ends up shooting three. <laughs> so the shoulder was fine. Nice penetration again. And this time, a conversion. And Mike Jarvis extended his arms because that is Barkley's domain. He just hasn't been able to knock him down. Again, they find Dabney at the free throw line. Billet for three. <laughs> Rebound, Postel, and a good one. Postel's numbers each and every year have just gone up and up. He's among league leaders in rebounding this year. Jesse out of the game, it's Postel to set that high screen for Barkley. And this is where Postel should take Billet to the box, I thought. Mm -hmm. oh, inside, drawing some bumps, switches to the weak hand and misses. The but putback is good. Postel, I believe, I mean, he had both hands up there. Attacking the rim. And now Glover knocks it out of bounds. You can't lob against the Johnny. St. John's with the last four points. Their energy level is starting to come up as they have reclaimed the lead. All over the glass, Johnny's by four. Out of the Big East. UConn, though, has lost three games in the conference. Beaten by Syracuse up at the Carrier Dome last night. You'll see St. John's at Syracuse, by the way, next to Big Monday. And how about some teams who maybe have surprised a little bit or a little bit better maybe than people getting credit for? Well, I agree. I mean, it's, you're looking for somebody else who's going to step up. Notre Dame at times has been terrific under Matt Doherty. Of course, Tommy Amaker hitting my old files to get that team playing <laughs> to that level. A nice play here. It's good to see more guys doing that. And West Virginia, we, you know, can't with, Stepping up. West Virginia with a win at the rack last week. Generally, it's conceded that Syracuse, UConn, St. John's are a class above the rest, but who will emerge from the pack to grab some postseason bids? Look at that jumper by Sal. How about him? Above the pack there. Once again, a nice cut. Get the ball high and converting. Seven for Salvi. Obviously, Rutgers figures in the mix. Miami, Notre Dame, Seton Hall a given right now. Will Villanova or Georgetown be able to break away from the back a little bit. And there's that jumper on that set play. They go the high side, Jones and Bootsy with a wide open look, couldn't convert. Rutgers out early here tonight, leading by as many as 12 as we bring you Big East basketball on ESPN2 from the Garden in New York. Despite the weather, Dan Schulman of Bill Raftery with you. Rutgers had a 28-16 lead. St. John's finished the first half on a 10-1 run, and now they've got a narrow lead here in the second half. Neither team has shot well. Nice luck. Sal the underneath, and Flores lays it in to tie the game. How about Joel? I mean, he has just contributed with cuts, shots, and passes. And he's exactly the kind of guy you love to bring off the bench. Not a good look here. Because he brings energy, he brings a lot of versatility to his game. He can play a couple different positions. And Dan, as bad as that shot looked, the ability to read by Barkley. They've been diving underneath. He's been going over the top. But this is the ability of Salvi just getting into a spot where he can make decisions. They're attacking a little bit more. It's helped their offense. Nice pass here with confidence. <laughs> Kent got that foot down just in the nick of time. Look at this move by Jones. And another one. What strength. But he gets a high five along the bench as well. I mean, he is an imposing, maybe not like Kent, but rugged individual. 
That's the seventh team foul already committed by the Red Storm of this half, and Jones is going to go to the line. We talked about how young he is, just turned 19 as a sophomore, averaging better than 16 a game, and a guy with limitless potential, it would seem. His jump shot has improved, I think. Yes. Uh, much more confident with it. And when you've got his ability to jump stop, he gets into the lane and elevates. It gives Kevin another weapon on the perimeter with Greer. Reggie Jesse returns for Bootsy Thornton. It's a struggle for Bootsy, I think. He's got to be playing in pain. See Kevin Clark over there, along with Mike, just acknowledging when you're, when you're hurting, this is a tough game. One of two for Jones, a 5-0 run for the Scarlet Knights, and a one-point lead on the road in what could be a very big night for them. Chance to win on the road, maybe beat a team that they haven't beaten in years. Kept alive, and Postel gets it back. Now, Postel will move just like Dante Jones. They get into the lane and elevate. Little matchup zone's been exhibited quite a bit. Nice open look. He can beat you out as well as in the lane. A three for Postel. He's got 11. That's the first three-point field goal tonight for St. John's. Good position by Kent. Nice curl, but not the release you want. They get offense. They get the big guy. Looks like it. Tell you what. He made a wonderful move to get free and just didn't come up with the finish necessary. N number three on a can. Fifth team foul this half on a Rutgers. St. John's, they have lost two in a row. It's the first time this season that's happened. They're 12 and 4 overall. Rutgers has won two in a row, and they're 11 and 6. Left. They are reading now the matchup. They didn't follow from the back. Glover moved up the lane. Turn. And again, you said if that's somebody other than Ken, if that's Salvi, they'd probably get a bounce pass and a layup, but they'll settle for the three. Well, here, here's the dilemma. You, you just want to beat the time clock, and then you want to make some good passes and judgments. So you need the Greers and Jones on the perimeter, but it would be nice to slide one of them there. I think they could go right at the defense. And here's this matchup again, Postel and Jones, probably the two best athletes in this game. Glover again. Nice check. Rebound, Dante Jones. Rutgers hanging around. Nice hands again, the open floor. Gray to Barkley, the lob for Gray. Oh, yeah. He can elevate, and Glass is not a pain to him. Chudney, one of the terrific college utilizers of the rectangle. The guy who hardly played last year has developed into a super sub this year. Greer again, another one. And that, it's just amazing that perimeter ability, all the coverage negated. Eight for Greer tonight, back to back threes for Greer to tie the game. This thing has heated up there. It has. Early on, both struggled, particularly St. John's. St. John's missed 15 of their first 16 shots, and Rutgers didn't shoot well enough to pull away. That was, that was against man to man. Good read by Gray. Step and go, Barkley. With a little sleight of hand. To Postel. Two point lead, St. John's. Under eight to play. And Gray is in there again. Nearly stole it. He gets called for the foul, his third. Just a step late. And Chudney and Mike Mike, Mike Beggett over there. He said he turned the hip on my guy. And having been there, you sort of beg a little bit. Leonardo Brown back into the game for Rutgers. Billet will get a rest. No, Billet will stay. Just going over for a quick conference. Billet going to the line. So Brown's going to wait at the table. Now, this is a place that he's very comfortable at 84%. Uh, Jarvis... Uh, a little concerned about the last particular call, and the officials asking Michael to just bide his time on the sidelines. Like his brother, good free throw shooter, 84%. You I had to get it in. Of course, I'm happy on the sidelines. Renato Brown, too. He doesn't get a chance to get in on that. <laughs> he was already on the floor, ready to go. Coach Dells hit one three this half. Now drives. And Mike Kitts has a foul. 
You know what amazes me, Dan? Don Jones. The feet. Jones, I mean, that, he almost got in position to get the charge. It was a good call. He was moving. But the recovery ability is extraordinary. The pace has picked up. Got a ball game here with St. John's up by two. Ball coming your way over on ESPN, but the weather has forced a change because of the snow and ice storm up and down the East Coast. Florida to Paul, as originally scheduled, you'll see it tomorrow night at 9 Eastern on ESPN. The Maryland Carolina game was originally going to be tomorrow night, but now it's Thursday at 7 Eastern because of the weather. You'll still see it on ESPN. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. Go.com. Well, you and I have done a few St. John's games the last couple of years, and three or four times a night, they'll make passes that'll just have everybody ooing and on. Well, the flag bearer may be tired, but not the step and go. As they end up, we're going to get Barkley over in this area with a step and go. Good understanding basketball wise, the spacing as he backs out. Now, watch this, Dan. Bing. And now everybody gets into a passing lane, and Postel with the good hands. He saw the ball come in. And Eric Band Aid all over to able to overcome. St. John's really getting it done inside despite a lot of size. Rutgers actually has more big bodies, but great passing by the Johnnies gets him some layups. At one point, Rutgers had a 12 point lead midway through the first half. St. John's by two right now, trying to snap a two game losing streak. A good movement. They screen low, Postel very active off a screen. Baseline on oh, Jones. He's tough. He is tough. He screamed. Pop. Give it. And put it on the floor. Painful for Rutgers. 15 for Postel as he exceeds his average. Bill it out of the game right now for Rutgers. Jumper from the corner. Too strong. Nice. Salvi kept it alive. And Kent lost it. The directors will retain a possession out of bounds. How about Salvia? He's keeping it alive. I mean, that's his salvo. His ability <laughs> to get pieces. Uh, you know, even the Villanova game the other day, he got a piece of one that led to a basket just by flailing. Not a good look here. On the run, Barkley. And a little touch foul on Greer. That's one that Greer is sort of not very happy with. Trying to contain. Force him back to the middle. Number three on Jeff Greer. Kevin Abandon's got three players with three fouls. Mike Jarvis has four players with three fouls, but nobody in this game has four. And the bonus in effect both ways now. Barkley will step to the line. And Barkley, one of those guys in the open floor, Dan, that does take advantage, and Greer knows it, even if the numbers are even. He has a flair for turning the corner and creating something. Missed the front end. Not a team really distinguishing itself from the line. Good use of the floor there by Jones. St. John's recovers so quickly, though, that Rutgers can't get that three. Oh, what a pass and a recovery. Oh, Gray gets the foul. Is that four? Wow. That puts them in real difficulty. Is Mike Jarvis concerned about the perimeter defense in the slippage here? You can see the hands in there. And Kent, unfortunately, the quicker grab and finish could have got him three. And the reason that foul on Chutney Gray is fourth is such a problem is because it does not appear as if Bootsy Thornton is going to be able to contribute here tonight. He's still holding that left shoulder on the bench. Played only briefly here in the second half. Six, maybe seven a deep team normally if Thornton can't play. They've got the five guys on the floor, and then if Mike Jarvis wants him, Donald Emanuel. I think he wants to play, though. I mean, you're right. He's been holding the shoulder and rubbing and feeling. He had a 55% shooter from the line on the season. One of two. He was down in the 40s last year, so he was making some progress. Villain returns. Postel's the guy, I think. Just his ability to make sure they get a good shot, make a good pass. 
Glover backing down Salvi, knocked away. Jesse finds the loose ball. Uh, Jesse saying to Glover, get it to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. This is generally a team that is extremely unselfish, always shares the basketball. And then this defense, I mean, it, it gnaws away, and they play so big, and it throws you off your game. And Billet really not able to get a touch in the half court. Here's Greer. Another three for Jeff Greer, his third this half. Well, it's home for him. Cardinal Hayes, we mentioned Tom Murray, the old-time coach up there. Kevin Bannon on the bench now, pumped as Rutgers is back within two, largely on the outside shooting of Greer. One of the problems with the press is that you will give open looks, too, if you don't cover or get back in the proper position. And against Rutgers, that can be fatal. They're such a good outside shooting team. And Barkley has that a touch, wants it out here with seven. Breakdown and dish. Goes to work on a billet. Off for Gray for three. Postel cleared a little room for himself, didn't he? Uh, he got a piece of knocked it out of bounds. He sure does. Well, you know going in who can make threes and just find a little spot. And the defense not reacting as they stay home and Gray not over in time. And that stroke getting better and better by Jeff Greer. Greer, a 41% shooter from beyond the arc. One of three Scarlet Knights, along with Jones and Billet, at 40% or better from three-point range. And the Chinese go, man to man. Let's see if they can get Bill a Barkley face guard. He might be able to get a step and go. Dabney has replaced Kent. Jones draws the contact. Tip back up. Wow. Tie game. Big time effort. Dabney didn't convert. Uh, but Jones picking up the crumbs. Toughness around the rim. 18 for Jones. His 10th rebound as well. A huge night in all departments for the sophomore. Crossover by Barkley. Too strong. Just not on top of his game on the offensive end. Remember how young this Rutgers team is? Two sophomores, two freshmen start on the road at the Garden against St. John's. They were putting themselves pretty well. A nice space out by uh, Billet. You're right. Very solid. They're growing as a team. Salvi. Greer. And a travel is the call. And the closeout by Postel caused it. Kevin Bannon is livid with the call, but he's got to be thrilled with the way his team has responded in the last few minutes. All energy and a tie game at 55. Because of the shoulder injury tonight, everybody else pretty much doing their job. Chudney Gray has been a real force. I think they're solid and they're confident in terms of toughness, but mix, uh, out of the mix is Eric Barkley having his typically knockout evening. I mean, that, that's hurt them. Uh, but when you, when you think of this Rutgers team, though, they are growing, and there's a confidence about them that they can provide the right shot, the right pass, the activity around the glass to get them some tips. And you can see the Rutgers, when they win, 14 attempts at 48%, and two of the losses, 22 attempts, 0.5, and 29%. 31 for tonight. Jeff Greer with three threes in the second half so he's up to 11 Adante Jones with 18 points and 10 rebounds Kent has been quiet hasn't played all that much isn't in the game now Dabney's on the floor for him and Salvi who doesn't start but he finishes getting more and more minutes for Rutgers I think the key for St. John's is Barkley getting the others involved it's not going to be his night from deep and conversely I think Greer and Jones at the other end Here's maybe the go-to guy in Postel. Draws the foul on Dante Jones. What did they know who to go to? Iso Postel against a pretty fair defender. You said 19. I remember those days years ago. <laughs> uh, but the bite, Walt Frazier in his heyday used to do that in this building. Get him up and let him hang. Number four on Dante Jones, who has been the best player on the floor tonight for the Scarlet Knights. I was, wasn't even going to say it. I was just thinking that LeVar Postel is among league leaders in free throw shooting. And th these are the type of situations, too, that test you. I mean, you expect to make them. Get your right guy on the free throw line if he comes up empty. 
And it spells doom. He's 87% on the year, one of two here, one point lead, St. John's. And really an aggressive D that causes the turnover, but they stepped it up, guarding the inbound passer. And Salvi not with a good response, a little heat on it. In St. John's case tonight, the best offense is a good defense. They force turnovers, they get baskets at the other end. And look at the conversation there. Glover's saying easier, and Postel's saying catch it. So the combination <laughs> didn't work, but they get it back. 30-second timeout taken by Mike Jarvis with 3.04 to play. St. John's trying to hang on. Remember how poorly they played in the last three minutes of the game Sunday against Ohio State. They led by 10. And then the Buckeyes went on an 11-0 run to finish the game and to beat St. John's by one. Glover had a chance to get a basket of the end, blocked by Ken Johnson, who had 11 blocks in that game. And then Barkley had a three, blocked by Scooney Penn. Penn had a big game and a and tremendous courage on the part of Scooney Penn to go out at 5-11 and block a shot that, if he gets called for the foul, Barkley gets three free throws. The times, as, as we look at the recap, the times had great shots of both blocks. I mean, just magnificent. The uh, big thing, I think, is last year, Barkley and Scooney Penn meeting in the regional That's final. Right. In the Elite uh, Eight. A lot of get to it in, in the last game between those two. But right now, you find a little something about your team. They're struggling St. John's. See if they can come up with an answer. You saw next, we'll head to the A-10 down into Philly. Dave Strader, Jay Billis standing by for Xavier and Temple. Just into the box, the flex cut. Barkley gets into the paint and hits. I'll tell you what, he is a gamer. The Legends! Out of Christ the King. 15 for Barkley. Struggling, but... <laughs> He's amazing. See if they can get Billet some looks. Postel on Greer now. Uh, where's Dante? I think he can do something with Chudney. Here they get the switch. Yep. And this may have been the way they started the possession. They may have switched back to where they were. Shot clock at four. Force it back. gets held by Barkley. No call. And Salvi with the putback. A missed time by Jesse. On the spot. Joe! He's got some answers for Rutgers. Joel Salvi, nine points, nine rebounds off the bench. Under two to play, one point a game. It's been a good one here tonight. Nice flash by Postel. Nice catch. Now the gray was expecting. What do you think? Barkley again? He loves to he, raise the yeah, level. He likes showtime. Down to nine. He's not giving it up. It's a penetrate, maybe finish. Well, stuck with it now. Not a good play. Greg gets away with one there. Yeah, that would have been wow. his fifth. That should have been five is right. Oh, well, Reggie Jesse on this one. Nice spin out by Bill. It's soft enough to be tipped, and the missed time opens it up for Salve. Last Monday, Miami beats Villanova at the buzzer. Last Tuesday, Georgetown to beat Boston College on a three-pointer by Kevin Braswell with one second left. It's that kind of year in the Big East where so many teams seem to be so close in ability that anything can happen in these kinds of games. Now, you were talking to addressing the road wins earlier. Mm -hmm. and I just think the the knowledge that the coaches have, St. John's runs a lot of nice bumps. Well, Rutgers has really adjusted well. The preparation, they see one another so often. I also think the consistency of the officiating. They hear tonight a mixed crew. Yes, you know, Mike Kitts, a seasoned veteran, and all of a sudden, because of problems getting here and getting shirts delivered in time for the Rutgers crew. <laughs> well, uh, that's, that's going to be a tough train ride home for those guys. So I think you got consistency on the road with officials and, yeah. again, that lack of respect for the opponent. You know, we can play with them. Let's go get them. Both teams over the limit. Both teams with plenty of timeouts. Rutgers has the arrow. St. John's has the lead. But Rutgers has the ball. This would be quite a statement for the Scarlet Knights if they can get out of here with a win, having lost the last five in a row to St. John's. Remember, Rutgers is 3-2 and two in the conference, but they're starting a three-game road trip now. A little 1-3-1 one, one with Gray in the back. Might get a tip on him. For, uh, what the timeout? A little wrinkle. Down to 10 on the shot clock. Jones, and Dabney. Oh, got to make that. And one, if they get what they want, big on little. With Gray at the disadvantage. Under a 
minutes of play. Wonderful job by Dante Jones, yes. too, with the pass. Getting into the gap. What explosiveness he has, that jump stop in the lane. So now I think they should start right now with 13 on the clock because it puts a lot of pressure on you at the end. Now it's down to nine. You don't have anything. Pinch or double. Barkley off the glass. Oh, another double onions. What a kiss. The kid has great courage. I mean, that would have been a great time to run a double and force him to give it up and then scramble. But how about this one? Get to the gap all over as Gray unable to negate on the big guy. But this looks like they're dead on delivery. The pull up, the kiss. Oh, the vegetable stand is open. <laughs> 17 to 9 for Eric Barkley, and he's making Billy come up with new phrases here tonight. <laughs> well, it amazes me because this is one of those nights where it wasn't in it wasn't his, his flow. Night, yeah. it, it, it just really, but now, when it counts, when they need him, he provides the lift to give Mike Jarvis a night on the town if they continue like this. But Rutgers now, I think. You've got to think, too. Look at these numbers, by the way. You can see the 7 for 20. That's not typical of him. I mean, he's a solid performer, generally good shot selection, six assists. But I think you got to go two real quick. Two real quick. Try a steal and give one. Don't just settle for the three, because if you miss and they rebound, the game may be got deep. Dabney's wide open, and they're a little late. Good pass. Him. Oh, what a save. LeVar Postel with the play of the night. Some recovery and look at this pass and well how smart's that move the ball don't get fouled salvi with the key well lavar postel a legitimate big play performer well the stars come out on broadway sometimes it's the visitor and what a wonderful look salvi about to be a finisher the climax of a great look Dabney, the presence in the past, but look at this save. Clean return to center. Oh, is that just a wonderful effort? What an incredible play by LeVar Postel, who has also scored 16 points tonight, but as much athleticism as you'll find in a guy in this league at 6'6", 212. He elevated way up over the rim because Salvi went up strong, two hands. And he got the right angle, too, then. So important to make sure you don't go right behind his back, get on the side, and the swipe. 16 points, nine rebounds, and two blocks tonight for LeVar Postel. St. John's, which played so poorly late in the game Sunday against Ohio State, has made some of its best decisions here in the last couple of minutes against Rutgers. A league play, games like this, so typical. And you get a guy like Barkley responding, as you know he's so capable of. And Postel, one of those unsung, talented performers that people, you have to see him regularly to realize what a lift he gives his team. Coming up next, we'll send you into the 8-10, Xavier and Temple. Remember, the Owls have Pepe Sanchez back at the point. See if that rejuvenates them. It has over the last couple of weeks. Barkley at the free throw line, trying to make it a two-possession game. Well, might as well go his way down the stretch. <laughs> uh, Bobby Oliva, his high school coach, always felt there was a burn in his belly and the frustration after a sound effort by Rutgers. They could try and score or maybe the push in a quick timeout. See what they do. One of two. And Salvi may have hit that out of yeah, bounds. You're right. Yeah, you're Well, here's why St. John's needs this one. They've lost two in a row and their next two games are at Notre Dame and then at Syracuse Monday night on ESPN. Got to get it in. And they got a steal here. Nice play by Greer. Oh, a jump ball. Oh, oh, my goodness. High up is the call. Oh, my goodness. As Postel and Greer came together. The arrow gives it to Rutgers, but Kevin Bannon was expecting free throws. That was an unusual circumstance right there. Oh, the clock stopped if he's fouled, and he goes to the free throw line. I mean, you're in position to do some damage. I tell you, I think you got to let him play on a little bit. Huh? Nice wrestle by Greer. At least let him turn and go to the goal. Another, oh. another timeout taken by St. John. Still a two-possession game with under five seconds to play.
Rutgers had a 12 point lead midway through the first half. St. John's missed 15 of its first 16 shots. Played most of the game without a Bootsy Thornton. And because of the injury when he wasn't there, he wasn't very effective. Yet they've got a chance to pull it out. Now, a two possession game, as you said, two deuces. You don't need the three. Uh, this is one of those automatic chuck and duck catch and load it up. And St. John's, conversely, will try and force it out as Xavier and Temple prepare. It's good to see Pepe back, yes, I think. Yes, uh, the, it went early in the year, a little bit leaderless, according to John Chaney. A head for the game. St. John's has done a remarkable job again tonight, taking care of the basketball. Just three turnovers this half, nine on the night. Only eight against Ohio State, despite losing that game, committing four of them in the final three minutes. But Mike Jarvis still hollering into coaching out instructions with under five seconds to play. See what Kevin Bannon's game plan is here. Well, I think he wants to make sure the ball goes backwards. Don't get a lob to the rim for the easy one. Force it back. And you just certainly don't want to foul on the three. Do they lose it or they get a piece? Point seven. Rutgers about out of miracles here tonight. They fought hard. They had a great chance to win this one on the road. Jones' shot would have counted if it had misses as St. John's rallies back from a 12-point first-half deficit to beat Rutgers 61 to 57. The Johnnies are now 13 and 4, 5 and 1 in the conference. Rutgers drops to 11 and 7, a 3 and a 3 in the Big East. Again, the final for Madison Square Garden. St. John's 61, Rutgers 57. Coming up next, it's Xavier and Temple from Philadelphia. For Bill Raftery, I'm Dan Schulman. Thanks for watching. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com.